Initiated and ask unanimous without objection. Consent that the privileges of the floor be granted to a fellow in my office, Gail Hansen. Without objection. Uh, Mr. President, uh, I think the American people are aware uh, that our country is in the midst of a major health care crisis. That's not a secret to anybody. 46 million Americans have no health insurance, and importantly, even more are underinsured with high deductibles and co-payments. Further, some 60 million Americans, including many with health insurance, do not have access to a medical home of their own. In fact, according to the Institute of Medicine, some 18,000 Americans die each year from preventable diseases because they lack health insurance and do not get to a doctor when they should. And I can recall very vividly talking to several physicians in Vermont who told me how people walked into their office quite sick and when they asked, why didn't you come in earlier, they said, well, we don't have a lot of money, we didn't have any health insurance, and the result is that those patients died. That happens every single day in this great country. And then when we talk about health care, we have to understand that access to dental care is even worse and then on top of that, in our nation, we pay the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. My state of Vermont borders on Canada, and it is not uncommon for people to be going from Vermont to Canada to buy the prescription drugs that they need at far lower cost than in America. And in the midst of all of this, of 46 million Americans without health insurance, people being underinsured, people paying outrageously high, cost for prescription drugs, at the end of the day, our nation pays far more per he for health care per person than any other country on earth. Far more, not even close. And yet, despite the enormous sum of money we spend, our health care outcomes, what we get for what we spend, lags behind many other countries. In terms of life expectancy, how long our people live, in terms of infant mortality and other health indices. According to a recent report from the National Center for Health Statistics, for example, one example, the United States ranks in infant mortality 29th in the world. 29th in the world. We are tied with Poland and Slovakia for 29th in the world in terms of infant mortality. In all due respect to our friends in Poland and Slovakia, we should be doing a lot better than that because we spend a lot more on health care than they do in Poland and Slovakia. Further, according to a study published in the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, the United States has the highest rate of preventable deaths among 19 industrialized nations and although our rate has declined over the past five years, it is doing so at a slower rate than other countries. According to that study, if the rate of preventable deaths in the United States improved to the average of the top three countries, France, Japan, and Australia, approximately 100,000 fewer U.S. residents would die annually. Mr. President, when we talk about health care, we're not just talking about individuals who suffer and die because they don't have health care. What we're talking about is that the high cost of health care, as President Obama makes clear all of the time, is a major, major economic issue as well. In our country today, we are now spending about 16 percent of our GNP on health care, and the cost of health care is continuing to rise at a very high rate, which becomes economically unsustainable. The fact of the matter is that General Motors, which recently declared bankruptcy, spends more money on health care per automobile than they do on steel. And that creates an economic climate, climate in which America, our companies, become non-competitive with other countries around the world. But it's not just large corporations like GM. Small business owners in Vermont and throughout this country are finding it harder and harder not only to provide health care for their workers, but even for themselves. 
In addition, a recent study found that medical problems contributed to 62 percent of all bankruptcies in 2007, and that between 2001 and 2007, the proportion of all bankruptcies attributable to medical problems rose by nearly 50 percent. And interestingly, 78 percent of those who experienced bankruptcy as a result of illness were insured. They were insured. This is not people did not have any health insurance, but it speaks to the inadequacy and the lack of coverage, comprehensive coverage, in many uh, health insurance uh, programs. Mr. Mr. President, uh, we really, as a Congress, uh, for whatever reason, and I'll suggest the reason in a moment, don't really spend a lot of time uh, really discussing why the American health care system is so expensive, why it is so inefficient, why it is so complicated. We don't talk about that very much. And I fear that that has a lot to do with the role that private health insurance have and play over the political process in this country. So let me be very clear. In my view, the evidence, the evidence is overwhelming that the function of a private health insurance company is not to provide health care. The function of a private health insurance company is to make as much money as it possibly can. And the truth is, the more health care a private health insurance company denies people, the more money it makes. So if you submit a claim for coverage and they deny it, from their perspective, that is a very good thing because they make more money. Further, in pursuit of making as much money as they can, private health insurance companies have created a patchwork system which is the most complicated, the most bureaucratic, and the most wasteful in the world. And according to a number of studies, we are wasting about $400 billion a year in administrative costs, in profiteering, and in bureaucratic billing practices, and that is enough money to provide health care to all of the uninsured. Now, I know that that's not an issue we're supposed to be talking about here on the floor of the Senate, because we're not supposed to take on the insurance companies or the drug companies because of all of their power. But I think if we are serious about moving toward a universal, comprehensive, cost-effective health care system in this country, we have got to talk about the very negative role that private health insurance companies are playing in that process. Administrative costs for insurers, employers, and the providers of health care in the United States are about one out of every four health care dollars that we spend. In other words, for every dollar that we spend, one quarter of that dollar does not go to doctors, does not go to nurses, does not go to medicine, does not go to therapies, it goes to administration. And that is at the root of the problem that we have in terms of health care costs in America. In pursuit of making uh, administrative in California, one example, in California only 66 percent of total insurance premiums are used to cover hospital and physician services. One third, one out of every three dollars, is spent on administration, billing, claims processing, sales and marketing, finance and underwriting. Mr. President, the American people want their health care dollars spent on health care. I know that's a radical idea, but when people spend money on health care, they assume that it goes to the provision of health care, not profiteering, not administration, not hiring more bureaucrats to tell us that we're not covered when we thought we were covered. The American people want as close to that dollar, 100 cents on that dollar, to go to health care and not bureaucracy. While health care costs in America have soared, as everybody knows, from 2003 
to 2007, the combined profits of the nation's major health insurance companies increased by 170 percent. Health care costs are soaring. The profits of the major health insurance companies have gone up by 170 percent from 2003 to 2007. And CEO compensation for the top seven health insurance companies averaged over $14 million per CEO. Mr. President, to add insult to injury, some of these health care profits are going directly into campaign contributions and into lobbying to make sure, in fact, that Congress does not move forward toward real health care reform, which, in my view, means a single-payer health care system. So, Mr. President, that's where we are at right now. We have the most inefficient, wasteful, bureaucratic system of any major country on Earth. Our health care outcomes, despite all the money we spend, are way below many other countries in the world. And we are not discussing the most important issue with regard to health care spending, and that is the role that private health insurance companies are playing. So, Mr. President, we are now in the beginning of the debate on health care, and I'm going to do my best to make sure that that issue of the role that private health insurance companies are playing in the system, the very negative role that they're playing, is something that, in fact, uh, we talk about. Uh, and with that, Mr. President, uh, I yield the floor. Mr. President.